Welcome back to the channel everybody. Now, you know I don't usually have John Deere things on the channel. Today I'm making an exception. So, I have these two plows right here. One is a single bottom, one is a two bottom. So this is a John Deere number 51 plow, this is a John Deere number 52 plow. I have the manuals for them. So that these are reprints, I believe, but uh, got them in a swap meet just to have some information on these things because manuals are invaluable, parts breakdowns, what have you. Now, I'm usually an IH plow guy. That's what I'm all tooled up for, but um, I paid $15 for this one, the single bottom. It came from a farm about three miles straight that way. Um, local farmer, uh, we've known them for decades. That's where this one came from, this two bottom basically was given to me by my uncle because my aunt wanted it out of his yard so and it's pretty well flogged you can see point is gone on that share this share is a little better although heavily worn the mold board has pieces out of it um we don't even have a land side on that bottom there is one left right here and a cyst spring has been broken one of the uh adjusting levers got snapped clean off so this is just kind of a parts unit um, they pretty much flogged this one to death but the single bottom it has a few issues like this adjustment bar is bent but the two bottom has a good one um, it looks like it's got a decent enough share to do a good job there's going to be enough suck to get it into the ground mold board's getting worn on the leading edge but it's going to be good enough where it'll work we're not getting sharp back here yet looking at the land side now these single bottoms were notorious for having rather long land sides on them but this is not even close to being right this is an old piece of cutting edge that somebody has all well, torched the old bolts out of and basically made to fit on here usually i'm pretty motivated to correct uh, detail things like this but in this case I just want to get this single bottom working enough to see how it works and then we'll just uh, if it's good we'll uh, we'll maybe correct that and make that right in the future they also have put this uh, this extra piece of bar on here to kind of assist in rolling the furrows um, that's certainly not factory but what I found to be very interesting was this washer underneath this nut and it looks like it's a tag off of maybe an electric engine or electric motor I should say we have uh, half rectifier wave from the general railway signal and company of rochester new york i don't know how much of that you guys are going to pick out on here but that is very neat uh looks like we have max dc volts 11 max amps 150 patent number 160 no sorry patent number 1640335 so i got a draw number on there serial number i don't know where that came from General Railway Signal Company, Rochester, New York, but somehow it found its way under the nut on this old plow. I mean, stories of the past, I don't know. Coming up here, pardon my shadow. This uh, adjusting lever has a little bit of a swale to it, but the corresponding one on the two bottoms good. See what I'm getting at? I think everything that's bad on this is good on this. This is the worst of the two plows, so I think this one's going to be a parts donor to get the single bottom fixed up. Just kind of looking at this here, the old trip rope. Get that back out of my way. That's probably going to go. Another thing I see, got this old chain that's wrapped around the front of the frame here. I'm not sure what this was from boy some of those links are stretched wow it's like well it's two chains the front chain is bolted to the back chain here and then the back chain is wrapped around the frame and then bolted again to itself we'll get this off of there All right, that cleaned us up here a little bit. Now, looking at these uh, these bent levers here, the way this one is basically mashed over, riveted into this link right here, and the corresponding piece is not utilized here, but rather back here. 
Uh, I think what's going to be easiest is if I just take the rest of this bent up handle off. I've just about got the thing off right now. And then straighten this piece right here. But now that I look at this, this other lower handle has been welded at one point. You can see an extra piece has been added, welded in. So I'd like to address that, but that is the corresponding broken and bent one on here. And I also need something for a coulter to put on there. So let's go down to the spare parts pile. I think I have everything I need. All right, we're getting a touch grown up down here. I gotta get my building built so I can store this stuff a little better. But most of this is gonna be IH stuff in here, but there, there are a few deer parts. That's an IH trip hitch. Get him back out of the way. IH Coulter. Another IH Coulter. Got what do we have here. It's this one. Another IH Coulter. Here we are. I think. Oh yeah, that's a deer. That's a deer. Oh, she got a big old disc on it yet. Set him off to the side. Now, oh, what else we got here? Get these out of the way. We have IH Coulter bracket. IH bracket. IH bracket. IH bracket. That should be the deer style. Should be another deer style. Take both of those up with us. Um, I think I got some handles down in here. Let's dig. And you're just getting stuff out of the way now. Our little check wheel. Okay. Share. 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 Two shares. Share. A couple mold boards. Use discs. I don't know why I keep these, but I do. Cast iron wheels. Okay, we have an IH lever there. Another IH lever. Get those off to the side. Okay, so the take wasn't a complete success. Turns out all I had down there was IH plow handles. So I had to make do with what I had. So I took this one off of the two bottom. Fits on there really well. I had to straighten all the uh, bent up portion of the existing one on here. That should fix us up pretty well there. So that other one that had been welded here, I also stole off of the two bottom. I had to straighten it somewhat, but I was able to snag an extra trip rope ring. So I have this one up here, and then the second one down here should help guide that trip rope on down to the release lever. So regardless of not finding handles, this was the, the take though. Um, got a coulter. The uh, disc is nice and big on the thing yet. I have three brackets that hold it to the frame, so I have plenty of uh, material there to get the single bottom fixed up with a coulter, and I had an extra John Deere trip hitch down there. It is the exact same as both of the hitches on these plows, so plenty of trip hitch parts. That makes me feel good. Now, I was going to change out this rod, um, take the nice straight one from the two bottom. Turns out that two bottom has a longer piece. That thing's about six full inches longer than this one right here. And the threaded portion looks like it's uh, it ends in a different spot. So I'm gonna see if I can straighten and repair this one and salvage it yet. And I was gonna take the whole hitch off anyway. I like freeing up all these bolts in case I need to do an adjustment behind the tractor in the field for draft. Everything is gonna come apart nice. Not gonna give me problems.
one thing I like to do on these implements is uh, clean the threads so that everything uh, goes together and comes back apart really nice. And then I coat everything with grease. Um, you know, I've never really liked anti-seize. And I'm probably going to make a lot of people mad out there. I don't care. I'm just saying anti-seize has never really exhibited all the magical properties that many uh, give it credit for. At least not for me. The stuff, I don't know if it's my climate here with the winter and the, I don't know, but the stuff, it's like it just, it dries up and then it turns tacky and then it just kind of disappears. And a couple years later, you never could even tell it was ever on there. But I got a lot of old rusty implements that sit outside and 10 years later, these nuts and bolts have come right back apart and the grease on the threads looks just as fresh as the day I put it on. So I've never really been a believer in anti-seize. I, I pretty much don't uh, waste money on it. I'm not trying to make anybody mad. If you've uh, had good luck with anti-seize, I'm happy for you. But for me, grease. that in right there so we got that rod straightened out crank moves again everything should be good there after a little snafu where I couldn't just change that out with the one from the two bottom and I'm gonna pop the hitch on every one of these bolts has been taken out cleaned and greased as well as the bolts for these side plates in case I need to do an adjustment in the field that stuff shouldn't give me any trouble now so hitch hooked in that rod and then I bump the camera. Always classic. Now let's align our hitch bolts right there. This one through in here. Come on. There we go. Rest on the jack stand now. I also got the trip part of the hitch freed up and working. Spring action on the pin. Everything here is working as it should now. You can crank this, raise the hitch, or lower the hitch, however you want to do that. That was a victory in itself, getting that mangled up uh, stuff straightened out. Okay everybody, it's three hours later but I finally have a coulter on this poor plow. Turned into another big rebuild project that I wasn't planning on doing. I'll show you where I ran into trouble. So the one I pulled out of my pile this morning that I thought was good, turns out the cone style bearing is destroyed in that thing. So it can't even make a full revolution. So basically the hubs are shot. The coulter disc is pretty good. The fork was good. But what I ended up doing was putting a new disc on another that other worn John Deere one that I found that fork now if this looks like it's a little rustier than everything else that's because uh, well I lent this to my younger brother Joe he was uh, out plowing his field with it a few years ago he had an old John Deere I think a number 44 plow anyway it doesn't matter but uh, he needed a couple coulters for it so <laughs> he's out plowing in some rocky ground and notices the plow didn't quite do as good of a job on the last pass gets to looking and the middle coulter is gone so it turns out what he did he broke the stand right off that's uh that's what's left of the stand actually it should go like this because the the fork went down here and we went back tried to find that thing and we never did find it so i just wrote it off and then he was plowing the same field the next year heard a clang and rolled that thing back to the surface so then he brought it back to me he's like hey here's your coulter <laughs> so that's why that one looks a little bit uh, a little bit more brown than the rest of the plow but what I ended up doing it had this smaller worn disc on it so I had a better disc so I torched all the rivets out replaced them with bolts and I tell you what that is a pretty stand-up coulter um, I took the stand out of that other one that turns out had the bad hub in it so that was another major rebuild project that took me about three hours more than what I thought or than what I planned on but that part's good so that's pretty much the whole day it's starting to get dark here we got some rain coming on probably be here shortly so might wrap uh wrap it right here this is the end of day one on the old plow i was hoping to have been done with it by now but like everything else it always gets more involved than what you think thanks for watching everybody okay we're up on the field wheels are all back on the plow it's hooked up behind the H, and I even treated it to a uh, a new trip rope. But you guys might be.